We will gather apples by the handful, handful, hatful, bagful and sackful. When the new year's here, it's time for a sailing. We believe in the apple tree plant. The branches are heavy, and they're ready for a big can. We believe in the apple tree plant. All that's bang, pots and pans. We will wake the apple tree man, for he will. Another um, 2,600 litres of juice. What's, what's your total litres you want to collect? 3,000 uh, 3, uh, 3, litres this year. Right. 3,000 litres with uh, about, about, about 60 The sun <laughs> is high and the earth is growing. We believe, believe in the apple tree now. The villagers hope they need a lifting. Believe, believe all that stands round and round We will praise the old tree man Raise a cup, anoint the roots Then just sing all for him by the handful, hatful, bagful and sackful. This is the story of the Old Tree Apple Festival, which I attended last weekend in the Welsh Borders, in many ways a model for how future festivals, life even, should be. Here's Tom to explain. So, um, my name's Tom. Um, I co-founded a brewery, Old, Old Tree Brewery, um, four years ago, um, which is a brewery inspired by uh, forests, ancient woodland and orchards and forest gardens and um, the idea, the inspiration came from picking elderflowers and the abundance of hedgerows and also from spending time working in an, in an old woodland and uh, realising how rich human culture is um, when, you, when you look at the history of how people used to meet their needs for food and drink. And um, I remember the f one of the first things we did in this woodland that sort of um, brought the people together that, that started Old Tree was um, tapping birch trees. And um, just, yeah, realising that you could turn this sap from a tree into a drink that tasted like a sort of mead, had its own sugar sauce. And um, yeah, we, 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 tapped, we tapped many a... Uh, Many a tree in that in that wood, the birch, the birch trees, and um, that was just the uh, the beginning of it, it. Sort of gave birth to the idea for um, us creating a, a a brewery that was based around forests and gardens, and could be a sort of network system, a 
where people could relearn fermentation to make the most of the the nutrients and the and the sugars and the good fruits and um, things that grow everywhere. Yeah. Um, so this idea for planting drink forest gardens as a sort of specific um, focus to food forests and agroforestry, which is, I think, provides so many answers to our great, greatest social and environmental problems. Um, so yeah, drink forests was our slogan, and then it's botanical drinks, edible landscapes, and then we got more interested in kombucha and live drinks and learned more about the gut and how our guts are home to so many microorganisms that are, are our immune system basically they are our, they are the basis for our health um, in the same way that the microbes that a plant exchanges nutrients with are the basis for their health and it's it's all it's all um, a, a, a sort of microbial uh, system and kombucha is a fascinating one because it's a a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast and, um, and in a way that's a good uh, metaphor for what the human gut is it's a symbiotic colony of, of millions of different bacteria and there's this unifying theme between that, that um, it's biodiversity in the forest and biodiversity in, the, in, in our diets that is going to contribute to health and well-being of the city. We found that there is a huge amount of energy for people to leave the cities and, and connect with each other. Whenever you, whenever you meet someone doing a meaningful outdoor task, you end up being friends with them. We found that so many friendships have been created and uh, even though it's been a huge amount of work picking as many apples as we can every year for five years and um, making cider could probably be very inefficiently, um, it's is, is paid off in, in the other ways that we don't tend to measure in our economic model. So it's a social, it's a social side of Old Tree, I guess, the bringing, bringing people together and like community and biodiversity, I think, are both really aligned. They, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot there. There's a lot that joins them and I, it's hard to explain, but that's the inspiration. <clears throat> For me, it seems almost like the future of how festivals should be. I mean, small and intimate, but participatory, where everyone turns up and becomes part of what's going on. They're not sitting there waiting to be entertained, although yeah. in the evening you'll probably have a good knees up and a DJ. But during the day, just seeing everyone mucking in with the cider and the apples today. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was amazing to watch. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's like a sort of social organism. Yeah, and social production, I think, is really important. You know, we're at the time of artificial intelligence where so many jobs are going to be lost. Actually, we need to have a clear vision of what kind of work we do want. And even if it isn't the most efficient work, if it brings lots of people together and they get to know each other and they can share stories with each other, then it's a good, it's good work. And um, yeah, I guess I see, we see so much potential for that in orchards and um, fields, fields that are, are so un underpopulated with people where they used to be so alive. And, um, we get more from the land by maximizing photosynthesis and you get more from, you get the most photosynthesis by having more people on the land because you have more attention to detail, you have more eyes per acre, you have people that can, that can, that can just prune a, a tree to get the light to that crop rather than take out that tree and just grow that crop the more that vertical height you have the more productive height you have it's just about creating gardens there where you can have a, a greater diversity of food you know like 90 percent of the world's population are now consuming um, about 20 plants apparently 20 food plants and they previous and there are 20,000 food plants that could be consumed by people and that's just the most ter start you know terrifying <laughs> reduction of sort of what we could be doing with our land and with our culture it's agriculture isn't it so that's it apples is apples apples is like the sort of link into um, agriculture and agriculture is the basis of our um, of our economy really and um, in, the, in the age where 
peak oil and climate change is happening, we desperately need more people on the land and more people building soil. I was always inspired by the quote um, by Bill Mollison that, you know, the, solution, the problems of the world become increasingly complex and the, the solutions remain embarrassingly simple. You know, we have to, we just have to observe what nature's doing rather than trying to remove it and enforce something else. And that's very much one of the themes that ran through the tree conference in Froome last weekend, actually. Listen to nature, listen to what it wants. Don't try and impose on it too much. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, it's like we are the world. It, we in, we live in, in, in the UK and the, the land here wants to be a forest. So there's nothing more efficient than just working with that. With that, because that's happening. Yeah, I think... I think there's so much potential for it and people it makes people happier. <laughs> it's a chance really through our social through our social network we've um, found this this um, this farm three pools which is uh, just uh, just a year old and has a big vision to be a permaculture demonstration farm um, and it's just conveniently only an hour and a, hour and a bit from our uh, orchards that we've that we previously had up, had access to rescue the un, un, unpicked small orchard apples, and uh, so now we're able to build a brewery here, and it's it's great to, to work with with them, and yeah, be in a place where to share the vision. You know, it's completely shared. The, the purpose and the vision is completely shared. So hopefully, this is a long-term annual apple festival that we can um, that we can do to. Um, to produce, to make more from the, the, the abundant fruits of the land. Uh, we are four years old as a brewery now, and there's a team of three of us doing this. And um, it's, for all of its uh, uh, um, benefits, it's a huge struggle to compete um, with um, market a marketplace and uh, that's um, so uh, well. It's it's so. It's so competitive, and there's so much money spent on sales and marketing, and we don't have that kind of um, money. And we we're going to be doing a crowdfunder in the next six months, and we're going to be um, uh, trying to increase our sales of kombucha because kombucha we see as the sort of engine that can um, that can keep us um, keep us brewing. Mm -hmm. um, it's we want to infuse the botanicals and the kombucha and create a range of love alcohol drinks. So this is like, it's got real potential for a brand, but it kind of has to be a social, a social, um, a social brand. So um, if you uh, like uh, kombucha and cider and believe in the, uh, in the idea, please, um, please uh, support Ultra in any way you can, help us get the word out share things on social media and we make it at 1.2 percent so it's like a low alcohol um, option rather than a diluted or pasteurized uh, soft drink um, and it, it provides a brilliant mixer for all kinds of botanical infusions and we love it to become a we'd like to get this on tap in lots of pubs as, as the low alcohol option and also do special flavors from forage botanical flu botanicals that we'd that we can open source um, the recipes for and um, yeah get as many people fermenting and um, foraging local resources and for us to keep going we've got to we've got to have the kombucha as the as the main thing so any support um, through kombucha through cider through crowdfunding um, it'd be amazing and also connecting with other organizations if you're trying to do similar things we'd like to partner with you and um, try and build a sort of symbiotic network like the symbiotic colony of bacteria changing the world together regenerating <laughs> the land changing the world so healing the earth and yeah bringing people together it's been a pleasure to talk to you tom thanks thanks Lee.
twisted apples from across the sea But they don't seem as sweet to me As the ones that grow here right outside in Brighton and I'm a, uh, also a fermenter, I like to ferment foods. Um, I work, with, work alongside Old Tree, um, running workshops in fermentation and um, I, I help with the nutrition side of that. Uh, I think uh, uh, fermentation is a, a really brilliant um, like way of uh, representing um, what we can do as a society as well. They, uh, a, kombu a kombucha, for example, is a, um, based on the principles of symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast, and you could put that into the same, uh, you, could, you could say that about our society as well, how we need to work as a, as a community to, to work with each other, to, for everything to work. Kombucha only tastes good if, you, if you've got a fine balance. Um, that's how I work with nutrition as well. Um, everything needs to be to be in balance. We need to have less stress. So in the world of fermentation, the art of fermentation, um, if anyone wants to get into fermentation, it's a wonderful thing to be able to take um, home and do at home. There's a book called um, The Art of Fermentation by Sandor Kapp. No. On our own we rot, together we make cider. <laughs> <laughs> do you know this part of the country? I don't, I don't no. know Wales that much at all. I really like, I really like Wales. It's a beautiful, I mean, look at it, it's amazing. Yeah. Missed the really sun is. earlier, but we got the, mm. the sunshine in our workshop earlier, which is really, really fab. Yeah. I think it's the best view I've ever had when running a workshop. Through a cup. <laughs> We're gonna try some dancing with some disco music. I don't know if it's gonna work, but it might do. So let's give it a go. Uh, we're gonna start with a dance called Mrs. McLeod's Real. And this dance is in a massive circle, so you need a partner. Find a partner. Hello, my name is Harry. Uh, I work for Old Tree Brewery, uh, and we've put on this festival, Apple Festival, with uh, apple juicing and uh, workshops. We called it a Kaylee Rave. Yeah, that was the that's the title we went with. And it was quite unique, really. I mean, I come from a background that has enjoyed very much more traditional end of Kayleys, yeah. English folk in particular, uh, and also been a raver. <laughs> before I started the big chill, when I chilled out a bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that combination for me was really exciting to hear. And how did it sort of, how did the original idea ferment in, in your mind? <laughs> uh, so it was, uh, we, we put on a Cayley last year with a live band um, in Brighton. Uh, and it was really fun, really successful. That was actually, we uh, drank all the cider um, at that Cayley from the previous year's Apple Festival. Um, uh, and that was with a live band um, and we were planning to do that again this year um, and try, got into contact with lots of folky people 
um, but for one reason or another people couldn't do it and people dropped out uh, and so it was a couple of weeks before the festival and we still didn't have a band but Kaylee was happening uh, so um, so you got your laptop out so I got my laptop out yeah I make electronic music and um, I love folk music uh, I have a background of folk music and gone to lots of festivals and that kind of thing um, so yeah got my laptop out started recording violin parts and then basically tried to make it as ridiculous and fun as possible I thought it was a good uh, excuse to see what kind of music I could get people dancing to <laughs> Definitely uh, very cosy, everyone got involved and danced the whole way. Like often people would sit, sit down, but uh, it's been very cold here. It was it was good to get everyone warm. Um, and yeah, it was very manic. <laughs> Somebody told me, is that true? I am, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, in uh, Oxfordshire. Yeah. I uh, grew up Morris dancing uh, for a team called Icknield Way Morris Men, uh, and they're a really fun side, uh, lots of musicians and stuff. Uh, I was also in a group called Nifty, which is the National Youth Folklore Troop of England, uh, and they're a really great side, so yeah, folk is has been a big part of my life, I think, <laughs> as well as dance music. So, yeah. <laughs> Victoria Hewlett and I make labyrinths. Tell me more. Um, I love working with um, the energy of the land and um, encouraging people to be mindful about 
their steps on the land seems quite a well, it is quite a lovely thing to do. Um, and labyrinths certainly encourage that. And there's, of course, the whole kind of mystic side to it where nobody really knows where labyrinths originated. I've got um, my living labyrinth at home in Bognor Regis. Um, I'm holding um, artefacts from the labyrinth at Woman Fest. Um, I've got plans for one in Norfolk. And um, I'm really hoping that I could possibly do one here. <laughs> um, and I also have um, a couple of travelling ones as well. So the narrative labyrinth and then another travelling one with nine foot poles, which is a bit of a statement. Um, I mean, personally, it's been um, a journey of discovery for me because I've, I've always been interested in different energies within the land. Um, uh, recently, over the last few years, come to the conclusion that um, you know I need to be working with those, um, and the labyrinth is a, a great fit. How important well. is how important is the land for all of us? Um, extremely, extremely, it's vital. Um, it's a way to encourage people to see, I mean, I sound like I'm kind of teaching if I use that phrase, don't I? But it's a way of um, enabling people to engage with the life of the land, recognise the energies that, that are there within the earth. I don't feel very qualified talking about it, but I can just, you know, it's an experiential thing, really. Um, you know, I, I didn't know what I was going to do when I came here, um, but I knew it would be great. I didn't, you know, what I don't want to do is, is kind of lay out a labyrinth and it's just a bit of fun. Um, for me, it's a bit deeper than that. And can you describe that process? Uh, yeah, it's a case of um, being very mindful about the setting that you're in um, and usually there'll be an aspect of the landscape that I'm drawn to, uh, which in this case was the crabapple tree uh, with all the mistletoe um, and it's, it's a really it's a very private process really because I'm clearing all of the chatter um, and just becoming really open to what else is, is out there. Um, and also, you know, looking visually, um, using all the senses really to engage with the other that is nature the weird and wonderful thing, the energies that are coursing through everything. Um, and yeah, with, with the tree here, I knew that that had to be the centre. And I had a bit of a chat with it, and it went, okay, well, we'll see, I'll we'll see. I'll we'll see what uh, I feel like when you're working around me. And I, had a, I did a bit of singing to it, and it quite liked that but you know, it's old and it's uh, grumpy. <laughs> and then I started lying, laying out the, the spiral and really working with the, the twist in the trunk. And then that was fine. It kind of went, oh, you got me. And um, yeah, and then it developed from there. And it's, it's such a fulfilling thing to do.